Blessings, everybody. This is Pastor Ben here. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. What's happening, everybody? I just wanted to come on very quickly today, say hello to you, so I could give you a quick little message uh, on the greatest gift of all today. Amen. So uh, let me welcome all of you. Let me call some new names. Uh, of course, there's, uh, uh, you know, we were using our new cameras and a new sound system. Praise God. So let me welcome. So hello there, Zareen. Blessings to you, Pretty Des. Blessings, Dolores. Blessings, Brenda. Shalom, shalom. Let me know where you are watching from. Give us some hearts, likes, and do share, share, share. Because this word will bless you. Amen. This word will bless you. Rababa. Yes, Julio. Blessings to you. Sandy, blessings to you. Rababande. Rababande. Rabande. Robo Sakata. Merry Christmas to every single one of you. I pray and hope. Brother Tim, you can zoom in. Every now and then, I pray and hope that every one of you are enjoying this day. And what better, what better way uh, to enjoy this day than, uh, you know, talking about the things of God and going deeper in Him. Amen. So uh, I want to go to the Word today, and I want to share some thoughts and revelations with you. Amen. Uh, on this miracle. Hello, Michelle. Armando Hinojos. Hey, Tim. Bless you. You're helping me out in the studio yeah. today. Yes. It's our first time, first of many. <laughs> Jolene, hello from Metro Atlanta. That's a new name for me. Blessings to Lord Sheena Berry. Um, not a strawberry, but a Sheena Berry. Amen. <laughs> aloha from Medford, Oregon. Hey, bless Milo. Yes, aloha to you. Milo Coffee. <laughs> Rababasa. Danielle Harris from Ohio. Amen. Praise God. Teresa Levesque. Well, blessings to you. Uh, you know, I know I haven't been live in a few days, but uh, it's, it's Christmas. And uh, before I go on to some other festivities, I just wanted to log on and give you this word today on the greatest gift of all. Amen. We already know, of course, Christ Jesus uh, was not born in this time. All right. Sorry to blow your Christian pagan bubble. Uh, but Jesus was actually not born in this week or in this day. He was not born in Christmas. He was not born in December. He was born around October. Uh, October was Sukkot, okay? And so Sukkot was the time where most Jews scholars believe that Jesus, Yeshua, was born uh, because of the significance of that feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Where the Bible says that God became man, yet he dwelt amongst men, Emmanuel. He tabernacled with us. And also Sukkot, October, is six months after Pesach, Passover, which is typically around April, which the scholars believe that's when John the Baptist was born. And as we read in the scriptures and the Gospels, uh, they were about six months apart from birth. All right? Amen. They were cousins. Hey, what up, cousin? Hey, what up? So today I want to talk to you about the greatest gift of all. On uh, this very Christmas time, if you're Mexican, Mexicano, I hope you're enjoying your tamales. Okay, if you're, uh, you know, American, hope you're enjoying your eggnog. All right, come on, somebody. Uh, but in this time, you know, we just bless you. We love you. We speak many blessings to you in this Christmas time season. Amen. But today I want to talk to you about the greatest gift of all. And we already know that Jesus is the greatest gift. The Holy Ghost is the greatest gift. Our salvation. Amen. Some say salvation. Uh, but who here knows that you can be saved but not inherit the greater things of God. Okay. You can be saved from hell, from death. But you may not fully inherit the greater things of God. That's why it's so important imperative for every single one of us to uh, work diligently with fear and trembling. Work diligently with fear and trembling here on this earth uh, so that we may uh, continue to bear greater fruit so that we may inherit greater rewards. I believe that the kingdom is a kingdom of rewards. Amen. And I'll have to do a greater in-depth teaching on the reward system of the kingdom and of heaven. Amen. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about the greatest gift of all and the three different gifts that was given, brought to you by Jesus. We already know this, but I'm sure most of you have not, probably have not even heard of a teaching on the three gifts and the revelation. So what's your revelation? The revelations of the three gifts, okay? So I love the story because I want to prophesy to you right now that even today on this Christmas day, and listen, we're, we're literally, I mean, we're six days away from ending 2020. Someone say six, okay? We're six days away from ending 2020. So I want to prophesy over you that these six days are going to be filled with miracles, with blessings, and with tremendous, overwhelming outcomes, results. You're going to be bewildered, buffoon, 
doomed. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be just, you know, uh, shot. Okay, because of the goodness of God. So I'm saying, amen. So um, I just release gifts over here. All right. Remember, the Father of Lights. He's a giver of all gifts. Amen. So I want to talk to you. Uh, let's go to some scripture first, and I'm really not gonna take too long today. Because I know it's Christmas. I know most of you, uh, you know, you're out and about getting fat. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're you're spending your credit card, uh, you know, on things you don't need to buy and things you don't need to have. But anyways, how about that? But anyways, let me go over to the Word of God. Because that's always a great place to go to. Matthew chapter 2. I love this. I love this whole story. All right. Merry Christmas. I hope you've been nice. Not naughty. Amen. Someone say... I've been, <laughs> bang, bang. All right, praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. All right, Matthew chapter 2. Rabbi, I feel the Holy Ghost. Have you been enjoying this Christmas day? Amen. I know some of you are offended. I said fat. I said fat with a PH, not with an F. All right. <laughs> Rabbi, ba. So let's go over to Matthew chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 7. All right, Matthew chapter 2, verse 7. Then Herod the king summoned the wise men, say wise men, secretly and ascertained them, uh, and ascertained from them, that's a big word, from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, say Bethlehem, come on, saying go and search diligently for the child. Some say go and search diligently, come on. The Holy Ghost is looking for you. All right, do we pursue, do we seek him? Are we searching diligently for Jesus? And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. All right, now that was a deception, that was a lie. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Now think about that, all right? Now people think it was the star of David, uh, the Christmas star. You know, I believe it was an angel, all right? Because uh, many times stars uh, in the sky, as was promised to Abraham, all right, your children will be like the stars in the sky, all right? And many times stars stand for angels or stand for angelic beings, orbs of light, all right? So they followed the angel, they followed the star to the place where the child was. When they saw that the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Come on, someone say joy, great joy. Amen. Someone say great joy is my portion. Verse 11. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures. Come on. Are you ready to open up your treasures? And don't worry, I'm not taking up an offering today. But I'm saying to you, are you ready to open up your treasures to buy the field that's in front of you? To, to buy the pearl of great price that's in front of you. Amen. And they offered him gifts, say gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Come on, somebody. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. All right, now, I pray today that these three gifts, as it was brought to Jesus at his birth, I pray that these three gifts will be brought before you today. I pray that the, the revelation and the realm of these three gifts will be opened up to you today in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. Now, first and foremost, I love the story. All right, because, uh, you know, these magis or uh, wise men or kings, they're very mysterious beings. Uh, you know, in fact, I remember when I was in China, uh, you know, there was a lot of evidence that said one of the magis was actually from China because of the ancient uh, artifacts and writings of, uh, you know, uh, around that same time and era. Of, of of Christ and of a prophesied Messiah. Uh, when I was in Mongolia last year, okay, I was in Mongolia in June 20, 2019 with the Wesley States of Campbell. And when we did a crusade there, the Mongols believed that one of the Magi's actually came from Mongolia. Isn't that interesting? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. All right, now, uh, for years, uh, people have believed that there are three wise men slash kings. Why is that? Because there were three gifts that were brought. But I want to tell you, just to, uh, you know, get you to think a little bit. I believe that it wasn't just three wise men, but it may have been more, okay? Significantly, prophetically, God always moves in Trinity and, and, and in terms of three. You follow me, yes? 
So there may have been three, because there were three distinct gifts that were mentioned. But who here knows, maybe there are many more gifts, different types of gifts. Come on, somebody. More gifts, different types of gifts, but it wasn't necessarily mentioned in the Synoptic Gospel of Matthew in this Christmas story. Are you following me? So I believe there were more gifts. Some say more gifts. And, and I believe that there could have been actually more wise men and kings than what we thought. Now, here's the thing. Uh, they weren't actually kings or wise men. They were, the original word says a magi. Someone say magi, all right? M-A-G-I. It's a magi. And the original Greek word, it comes from majus, all right? Now, what do you think that stands for? Majus, magus. It stands for magician, okay? So these three beings that were uh, uh, written out, connotated in the, in the Bible, in the gospel, they're actually magicians. These people, these three beings, they were astrologists, wizards, witches, and magicians. They studied the stars, like Abraham. They remember, Abraham was a Chaldean. All right, which and the Chaldeans, they were they were astrologists. They looked up and they studied the stars. So therefore, they were into science and they were into the mystical spiritual things. So these three magi's were actually three magicians. They studied the stars. They were astrologists. They studied the times and seasons, just like the tribe of, uh, the tribe of, uh, help me here. The tribe of, uh, I'm losing my thought. The tribe of uh, non-Nicodemus. The tribe of Issachar. Thank you, Lord. The tribe of Issachar. All right. They, they understood the times and the seasons. Uh, but these three uh, magicians, they understood the spiritual realm. They read the stars, and they were led to honor the greatest spiritual being, the greatest fulfillment of prophecy. And of course, the name is Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Some say amen. So I love this. Hopefully you're receiving some revelation and some teaching right now. So these three magicians, or let's say there's more, they followed the star or the angel to the place where Jesus was, and they gave him three gifts. Some say three gifts. Are you ready to receive these three gifts? Come on, somebody. Are you ready to receive these three gifts from Papa God? Now, I want to give you the significance of these three gifts or these three realms. Some say realms, okay? Um, these three gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all right? Gold, frankincense, uh and myrrh, all right? Someone say gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, let me talk to you about the realm of these three gifts that were brought to Jesus. Because each three of these had a prophetic significance and meaning confirming to who Jesus was. Confirming to who this baby boy was, okay? The, these three gifts had a profound component to uh, prophesying to the embodiment of Yeshua's future. Okay. The gold, say gold. The gold stands for uh, Jesus being a king. Okay, The gold stands for kingship. All right. So gold stands for kingship. We already know that gold is the most precious of metals. We already know that gold, uh, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the word of God is refined seven times over like the purest form of gold. I don't know about you, but I want to be the purest of gold. I don't want to be hay, wood, stubble, precious stones. I want to be gold after being tried and tested by the fire. Amen. And I prophesy now that all your works in this year, 2020, that as it's being tested in this last six days of 2020, I pray that your works will not be left with residue, with junk, with gunk, with wood, hay, stubble, but it would actually be precious gold. That is purely refined in the fire in the eyes of God. Amen. All right, so gold stands for king. Jesus was the king. So the first gift stands for the king. And remember, in the Bible, whenever anything is written first, okay, first or last or in the middle, the order of how it was written is significantly important. It, there's a reason why uh, it was written gold first. Come on, somebody. Because Jesus was first recognized as king. Okay? And then the order comes on. All right, so what's frankincense? Follow me. Frankincense prophesied of Jesus' uh, position as a priest. Some would say priest. But not just any priest, the high priest. All right? The frankincense signified to Jesus as the high priest. Someone say high priest. Come on. Someone say that ain't no high. 
like the Most High. Amen. Jesus was the high priest. Now, let me tell you a little bit about frankincense and and why frankincense is so important. Frankincense uh, was used for many priestly duties. It was used to cover the meats of sacrifices and offerings. Okay. Frankincense also has to do with the prayers of the priests, the prayers of the saints. So as frankincense or incense is burned, Shata, the, the cloud and the smoke would fill the temple and the aroma, the fragrance would begin to manifest like a cloud, like a bubble. And so that uh, stood for the priestly blessing, the prayers of the saints. Someone say, my prayers are going up. Amen. Someone say, my prayers are filling this room. Someone say, my prayers is becoming a cloud which is causing the heavy rain to fall upon my life. Amen. And that's what prayers do. Hear me now. When you pray, it thickens the atmosphere of the Kavod presence. When you pray, it becomes like incense or frankincense, and it becomes this thick, dark cloud where all of a sudden it becomes so heavy that it has to pour out the blessings of God in your life. Someone say, Amen. Someone say, I'm ready. Rabba for outpouring. Someone say, I'm ready for heavy rain. Someone say, Amen. My gosh. So frankincense has to do with the priestly office, with the priestly duty. And so the second gift that's recognized and given to Jesus, baby boy Jesus, is you are a priest. And not any priest, but you are the high priest. Remember, it's frankincense that was used in the priestly sacrifices in the temple of God. Come on, somebody. Only in the temple. And the third, yes, you could have guessed it, which is myrrh. Someone say myrrh stands for the prophetic office. Now, this is interesting because to, in the Jewish days and the Jewish customs, myrrh was used for the embalmment of a dead body. So imagine Lazarus. He's dead. They embalmed his whole body inside and out with myrrh. They embalmed his whole body with myrrh. It's, it's like, you know, you go to Ripley's, believe it or not, and you see all of these people made of wax in the wax museum, right? And, uh, you know, there's a shiny glow where their their body is not smelling, it's not decaying, deteriorating. There's an embalmment. Someone say, Jesus, there's embalming you. So the myrrh stands for the prophetic office because myrrh was used as medicine. When people had pain in their body, when people had um, different issues, uh, ailments, uh, different, uh, you know, wounds and cuts and slashes on their body, they would use myrrh for healing anointing. Come on. So, and when someone died, they used myrrh to cover uh, the dead body as well. Someone say medicine. Someone say ointment. Someone say healing, balm. Okay. So myrrh stands for the prophet because the prophetic office suffers a lot. The prophet brings healing. But also the prophet suffers. So therefore, as the prophet dies and suffers, the prophet needs the myrrh of God to cover his life, her life. Are you following me here today? So the myrrh stands for death, stands for suffering. But it also stands for uh, a covering. It stands for healing. It stands for the anointment, the ointment of God. So these three gifts, which stand for the kingly, the priestly, and the prophetic, was brought to baby boy Jesus to signify to the world that he is the whole, he is representing the whole government of God. My gosh. He's representing the whole government of God. He's representing the executive, the judicial, and the legislative. He is representing the uh, presidential, the president, okay, the cabinet. He's representing the Senate and the House, and he's representing the Supreme Court. Jesus embodies the three main functions of all of Israel, of the whole government of God, and they're prophetically presenting these gifts to baby boy Jesus. Now, follow me here, all right? I'm almost done here today. The gold stands for the Father, okay? Remember, the Father is the King of kings. He's the King, all right? The gold stands for the Father. Someone say amen, all right? So the Father, in a sense, was recognizing baby boy Jesus. The... The priestly or the frankincense, it stands for the Son, the, the Trinity of the Son. All right? 
because as Jesus walked on the earth, he walked as a son or the son, and he walked as a priest. So the frankincense represents the son, because remember, priests would always feel the people. They would always feel the pain of the people. They would take the burdens of the people upon themselves. That's the job of a priest is to talk, to communicate, to do sacrifices, to do offerings, to be that witness or to be that, um, that minister that stands in the gap in between God and the people. All right. So the son stands for the priest. And then lastly, of course, we already know myrrh stands for the Holy Spirit, which is the prophetic office because the Holy Spirit brings life and healing to all. All right. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Ghost is the counselor. He is the paracletos. He is the breath of life. He, he brings wholeness, healing inside and out to every single person. So say amen. So these three gifts were brought to baby boy Jesus. Someone say, teach Pastor Ben. Someone say, hallelujah. I want to talk to you real quick about the importance of recognizing these three gifts in your life. Okay, listen. As these three gifts were brought to baby boy Jesus, I believe these three gifts are in your life. They're wanting to be manifested in and through you. The gold the frankincense and the myrrh, the gold, the frankincense and the myrrh. So now today on Christmas day, now as we continue on from this day, you can actually release the gold over people. You can release the kingly anointing, the father's heart over everybody. You can begin to move in the priestly office, begin to move in frankincense, begin to move in intercession and prayer where the fragrance of your priestly life begins to fill up the whole room. You can begin to move in the prophetic anointing or the embalmment of myrrh, where you release healing, where you release a covering, where, uh, uh, you know, you prepare people uh, unto the marriage of Christ Jesus. So there's these three gifts and these three realms. It's only in the book of Matthew, out of the four Gospels, that the magi, the magicians, are mentioned. Amen. Come on, somebody. But as we're bringing this to a close here, they opened up their treasuries. Okay. Now, now gold, frankincense, myrrh, they were not cheap gifts. They were not cheap gifts. Right? The, this was the most finest of all that they carried and all that they had. This was the best of all that they had in all of their travels. As they traveled, as they went to and fro in the desert lands, this was the best that they gathered and they collected throughout the years. And they said, no greater honor do I have than to lay it down in honor of this baby boy, this king. They opened up their treasures because they found the greatest international eternal treasure. Are you and I willing, on this Christmas day, are we willing to open up our hearts? Are we willing to open up our treasures? Are we willing to open up the treasuries of our heart, of our soul, where our secrets, our sins, our failures, our successes, our fears, our anxieties, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the really ugly, all of those things in this year, are we able to open up the treasuries of our heart and say, Jesus, you're worth it. You may not be... In full fruition, you may not be the full man, God, but as the babe, God, we honor you. We honor you in seed form. We we don't just honor you in a tree of righteousness, but we honor you in seed form. We honor you even as a babe, Lord God. My gosh, I know I'm preaching right now. Are we able to open up our treasuries and bless and honor the seed? Are we able to open up our treasuries and bless and honor? The little minuscule babe, the baby in sweater and cloths, born in Bethlehem. Rabbi CK, remember all of these things, they were fulfillment of prophecy. Are we able to honor what looks small, what looks little, what, what looks uh what looks uh ridiculous? Amen, people of God. Are we able to open up our treasuries to give unto and recognize the greater blessing that's in front of us? Some say amen. Listen, as I bring this to a close here, and, and like a, 
like a genuine Pentecostal preacher. I just said that about three times in the last seven minutes. Amen. But as we bring this to a closure, what a wonder, what a revelation that possibly these three magicians, they were all studying and looking up in the sky. They all had different encounters at the same time. There are maybe even more than three magicians. Remember that. Imagine five, imagine ten. All scattered in the Asian African world at that time. And they all had encounters. And they followed the star to this one location. And boom, simultaneously, they all recognized and said, I've been living for this moment. I've been storing up my wealth for this king, for this babe. I had been preparing my whole life for this new year, 2021. I've been getting everything ready, all my studies, all my accomplishments, all my accolades. Everything has been up for this battle, this challenge, this year, this moment. I have stored all of this for this baby moment. And God is saying, I'm bringing things together. I'm bringing people together. I'm bringing angels. I'm bringing confirmations. I'm bringing things from the east, north, south, and west, from every direction. I'm bringing it all together for this climactic moment to receive, to say receive, to receive the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior of the world, the one who died on the cross, the one who is the fulfillment of all prophecy, of of every messianic prophecy, the one who will come again and render the heavens and return on the cloud, the one who is currently seated on the throne at the right hand of our Father, the one who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who is the judge of all, the one who has the keys of death and Hades in his hand, the one who could not be held by death, the one who resurrected again on the third day. He is our Jewish king. He is the light of the world. He is the king of the Jews. And he's the king of the Gentiles. That king, that Jesus, who was a baby boy, prophesied of birth from a virgin. A woman, a young girl who did not yet know a man, who was not married, who did not know a man intimately, but a woman who was fully filled with the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit of God. And that little girl was entrusted to give Jesus to the world. People of God received the greatest gift. His name is Jesus. And even in this time, I want to tell you now, everything going on in the world today, it is pointing to Jesus. I'll tell you that. It's not pointing to Joe Biden. It's not pointing to Trump. It's pointing to Jesus. It's pointing to the spirit of prophecy, the God of all prophecy. It's pointing to Jesus. Let me pray for you today. I want you right now to write below. If this quick little word today messaged you, I want you to write uh, if, if it blessed you. Excuse me. I want you to write if it blessed you, if you're encouraged. What did you learn today? What blessed you today? But as I close today in prayer on this Christmas day, I want to release the three gifts of God over you. The three realms of God. I want to release the three realms of, of the Godhead. The three revelations that was manifested and that acknowledged Jesus. The king, the priest, and the prophet. The gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. You might be saying, well, Pastor Ben, I'm moving in the myrrh, but I need some frankincense. You might say, Pastor Ben, I'm moving in gold as a king. But I, I need to be humble. I need to move in frankincense. I need to be a priest. I need to. I want to know what it means to be a priest. I want to know what it means to be a prof prophet, to move in a prophetic anointing. Rabba, ba. You may say, well, Pastor Ben, I'm, I'm really good with people, like a priest. But I don't know how to be a king or a queen. I don't know how to have dominion and have authority. I pray today that the Lord will bless you with these three gifts, these three realms. I pray that Jesus will be magnified and glorified in your life. Through these three realms, these three gifts, these three revelations. I want to say Merry Christmas, Mas Christ, Mas Christos. And even on this day, my friends, people of God, may the Lord be with you. May the fourth be with you. And uh, I pray just gifts upon gifts. Kairos Mata, the Kairos, the Kairos, the gifts of Christ, the gifts of of the Holy Ghost to embrace you, your family, your ministry, your business, your your spirit man, your mind, your heart. Listen, stretch out your hands. I pray 
that God will break all depression. God will break any loneliness, any suicide, any torment and attack of the mind. I pray that God will break off any spirits of loneliness where you feel like you are depressed and oppressed, suppressed. You feel like you are all alone. I pray right now that the Father of Lights will come crashing in where you will feel the Holy Ghost beginning to fill you with gifts upon gifts and with realms upon realms being opened up and activated. I pray in this Christmas day that your family will be blessed, you will be kissed from Jesus from heaven above, and that you will get the winking from Papa God saying he's pleased with you, he is, he favors you, and he takes great pleasure in you. I bless you people of God. Thanks for watching today. Do comment below what you enjoyed the most. This is Pastor Ben Lemire. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'm sure I'll see you in the next few days again. And I hope, can't wait to see you at Open Heavens this Sunday. Amen. Blessing. Shalom. Out.